So, to start the practice, uh, you will go to the tutorial for your data to the tutorial for, and there is a file there, a shortcut, uh, that is called start air data. Hmm? Do you have this one? Ah, you don't have it. Yeah, because I didn't record it. Is you probably you are the only one that or maybe no start. <coughs> start yeah start start early. Mm -hmm. so that doesn't matter. You you will open R uh -huh. So you see that I already have great like a uh, it up uh, workspace for all of you. Yesterday I passed by your computers and I paste this file in your computers that is a uh, a workspace. Hmm? <laughs> it's just to, I did this just to facilitate the setup of some working directories, you know, in the way that you will not make mistakes about looking for your data. <laughs> it's a small, it's a small thing. The thing is, that usually you are going to have this type of objects, this type of files in your in your computer that is a work workspace. So this is like the basic workspace that we will use today to analyze our our data, you know. <laughs> So, no. Francisco, just some question. Yeah. Uh, where do you store your data? In which uh, for format do you? Here. But okay, I collected data in EPDATA, for example. You can export it for R? Or? Yeah. yeah, you can read EPDATA files in R, or STATA files in R, or Excel okay. files in R, or Access file, files in R. Then it doesn't matter how I see it my. Data, you can read them okay. in, uh, in, in the card. Hmm? So, to, to open the program, you can use directly your uh, um, shortcuts in your uh, program menu, like here. You can open it eh? through your menu. R, and you open the version that you have installed. I have the 14. Point, uh, Zero and the 14.2, uh, 14.1. So you can click and it will open the program as any other program, you know, it's like the Stata or, or whatever. But one that you have saved a, a workspace, you can start the program as well do, doing a double click on your workspace. Hmm? So you can try to open it through the normal program menu and we can close it and after we will open it. Uh, using the workspace that I paste on your computer. Let, let's open first the program in the, in the normal way, using the, the program menu. Mm -hmm. not, not doing double click in the, in the workspace that I paste. So this is the, the normal view of uh, R in, uh, when, when you open it. You see that um, there is some similarities with uh, Stata. No? Not many, but I will try to to give you, to, to, to show you to show you some some of them. The the main one, the main one, and the more important one is that this there is this command window. So this is the same window that we use in Stata to write our commands and to send them to the software. Okay. Usually, this window is located here in, in Stata. So if you want to do a Stata-like uh, view, it, it's usually here. It's something like this, you know? In Stata, you have here your uh, uh, line of commands and here the variables huh? located. And, and the, the results appear over here. Huh? This is. <laughs> no, but sometimes you know people get blocked by the fact that they already know a software and they think that they are going to learn something completely new, and it's not the case. I mean, the logic behind is very similar. Yeah. You have a command window that you will use to transfer or to send information to the uh, software. Okay. So there is a, a very uh, useful command uh, in R. That is the command uh, ls. Quit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Quit. <laughs> 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 
So, the command L, L S bracket is very useful in, in R because, because it shows the objects that you have in your workspace. Okay? So now if I type L S bracket, can you see? Can I put the the wind the 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 yeah. <laughs> The, you make the command window there thing? and we won't have an issue, no? It's just, it's just still a, a statistical software. <laughs> no, because sometimes people really, I, I have tried to use uh, R with many different people and sometimes <laughs> they, they, they get so problems for, for things that are completely, uh, you know? So, okay, if we do ls brackets, the, the, what the software is telling me is that there is not any object in the in the world space. Mm -hmm. Could you just make the characters a bit bigger? The font size, increase the font yeah. size? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah, nothing. Okay, so there I have my, my first command, that is the ls command, that lists all the objects that I have in my workspace. Here, we have not created any. So, is exactly what the, the software is telling me. So, I think that we can start with the first uh, practice, even, even without launching the, the, the workspace that I put in the computer. We are going to continue working like this. Because Just one question. Mm -hmm. All the commands that uh, you can write, because instead, instead you have uh, a list of possible commands, is it the same things in, in F, in a way you... With the fact that you create object and so on, you use this object to create command. I don't know. If I don't get the question. No. Yeah, you have a list of <laughs> command. Yeah. Yeah, but you, you, this is a list of command. Where did you get is the, the software that give you the list of command that you can use? You can take. Yeah, there is, like is a help. A, there is a help where you have all the possible commands that you can use in R. They are. A lot. No, I mean, but it's just for, you know, as you say, this is the basic ones to show the object that I create. Uh, we, will, yeah. we will discuss today some useful commands okay. through the okay. sessions that are uh, useful exactly to analyze a special data. But there is other ones, for instance, a usual one that we use in our regression analysis in Stata is the GLM command. Mm -hmm. huh? General Linear Models. Huh? For the LM linear model, this is regress in Stata. Hmm? But there is commands that are like this in R, you, know? you, know, you, you need to know them. The GLM command allows to do general linear models. Hmm? So there is different commands in R that I think that this is the, the small uh, work to do, is to develop, to, 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 to start uh, discovering these commands and to apply them for your analysis. Hmm? So, okay, let's start with the practice and we will, we will follow the first exercise uh, together. <laughs> What's going on for you? The dark pens are better for contrast. Ah, okay. okay. The red is a bit bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I keep them here. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> the first point is to get started with uh, the R statistical software and what I request in the first point is to open R through the uh, workspace that I store in your computer but you saw that we started as well with with the program menu and the practice is going to work uh, as well, uh, as well okay? so the, the first thing is to type the ls um, command in order to see all the objects that you have in your workspace. In this case, we don't have anything. Hmm? So we are going to create our first object in R. Hmm? As I said before, we are going to create the, mo the most simple object possible, that is a single number. Okay? So we are going to create a number, a, an object, that it will be a number, that I'm going to call number one. Okay? To assign a value, in R to one object, we have two options. Huh? We can do equal, number one equal to five, hmm? 
or we can use this other uh, notation is minus and uh, slash hmm? this has become possible in R recently in the last versions at the beginning in the first versions in R to assign values to an object we use this notation hmm? so people like me that we are using R for a long time we are used to this way I prefer this way so we are going to use this way in the, in the, in the, in the practice. But, I mean, we could use as well this way, this way, equal. Huh? So it's meant to be an arrow. Hmm? This is meant to be an arrow. Yes. So you exactly. To assign, is, it means 5 is assigned to the number 1. So it's quite straightforward. <laughs> okay, so I, I recommend to use this notation. Because just in case that... You find somebody with previous versions of R or whatever, your scripts will work always, you know? And this will work only for the new uh, new versions of R. So this is like a more general way to assign values to, to R. So we are going to say, I'm going to assign the number 5 to the first object that um, I'm going to create. Hmm? So now if I type ls, in order to know the objects that I have in my workspace, you can see that we have a first object huh? that is the number one. The number one. Huh? If I type the name of the object, number one, R provide me the value of this object is the number five. It's quite. Uh, it's stupid, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's, it will provide the, the, the number five. So we can try now to create a more uh, complex object huh? that is a vector, for instance, a collection of numbers. To create a, this type of uh, object, we are going to, to use the command C. Hmm? There is a collection of these numbers. Huh? So we are going to put some numbers within. It's all in your in your in your practical set eh, if you if you want to do it. So in order to create the vector one, I'm going to use the C command and within the bracket I'm going to put the numbers that I want to uh, assign to this vector one. Can you delete something that you created? Like yeah. I wrote vect without the one, and then it created vect, and then I want to create Yeah, I'm going to create another number, for instance, number two, that is uh, a seven. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And now we have three different, sorry, three different uh, objects, number one, number two, and the vector one hmm, that I just created. So in order to uh, delete one object, you will use the remove rm command. Hmm? And inside, you will put the name of the object that you want to delete. For instance, the number two. Hmm? If I type now ls, I have, again, only the number one and the vector one. So. If you type vector1, R is going to provide you the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is the value that we have assigned to this object. Is it clear for everybody? Does there have to be a space? No. It's, it's not clear. Really if you put them, it's not an issue. Just see. 20? Come on, create 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 for instance, a very useful one is the rec command. 
means repetition. Hmm? The red, for the red command, you need to specify two values. First, the value that you want to repeat, for instance, one, and the number of the times that you want to repeat this value, for instance, five times. Hmm? So, if you use this syntax, the software will repeat one, five, five times. Okay. So I'm going to use this command to create a, a second object, a second vector, that it will be the vector 2. Hmm? I assign a repetition that is 1, 5 times. Hmm? If you type ls, the software shows you the, the objects that you have so far. Hmm? Is the number one, the vector one, and the vector two. Hmm? You can type vector two to see that actually R has created a vector that contains five times the value one. Alright? But I know that you want more complex objects. Hmm? For instance, databases. This is what we want to have in our workspace because we want to analyze databases. So there is a very useful command in R that is the command data frame. So using this command, you can put vectors of the same of the same length and R will create a database with them. For instance, we can use the vector 1 and the vector 2 to create a small database. Hmm? This can be uh, the ID number and this can be the case control status. Okay? This can be case 1, case 1, uh, case, 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 and these are my five first cases of the database. Okay. So, using vectors, you can imagine that you can have more IDs and more case control status. Okay. So, you can create a small database using this, this command. So, I'm going to create my first database that I'm going to call DAT1 using the command data frame and the two vectors that I created previously. Okay. If you type ls, you will see that now our database is in our workspace. We can type the, uh, that one and we will observe our database with the first variable being vector one and the second variable being vector two. Okay. You know all of you know a very useful command in Stata that is the edit command. Hmm? So if you type edit day one, you will open your uh, editor, like in Stata. Okay? And you can edit your database. So we are going to type edit. <coughs> It has to be the same length. I mean, uh, vector one is five digit, and vector two yes. is five digit. Okay, that that it can yeah. be they can be in the same uh, database. So basically, you need the same number of rows in your in your database. Yeah. 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 Using this command, the editor uh, is open. I mean, it's not as nice as the Stata one, but still, it's a nice. Editor. <laughs> so, probably we, we know that indeed these two individuals were not cases, they were controls. Huh? So we can change here the information. We close.
Ah, yes, because we need to assign it. Hmm? It's not... Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, we are going not to use this 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 way to edit. I I will show you another way because otherwise it will be. Just visualize the now in the new version. It's just visualized, but it, it does not edit. It, before it used to be. Now in the new version of R, you need to first say that you are going to edit, like you are going to assign new information to your data. Hmm? Do the edit. Change your values. And now you have your database changed. Okay? So it's a bit, it's a bit different. Okay? Let me show you. So, First, you need to say the vector where you are going to change the information, date one. You are going to assign the new information, and now you type the edit. Hmm? So you press enter after the assignment, yeah. and yeah. the class is automatically added. Yeah. But I mean, we will see that this is not often done in R. It's just. Uh, <laughs> So now you have your database with three cases and two controls. So far so good? Yeah. So, but this is very tiring, you know, to create a database. So most often what you are going to do is to create databases in EpiData, in Access, in EpiInfo, in uh, Excel and uh, you are going to you want to transfer them to your software okay so in the next uh, section of the practical we are going to learn how to import um, uh, data into us okay <coughs> So the first thing that we need to do is to uh, select the directory where we have uh, the information, you know? Because if you type, I mean, there, there is a command that is uh, wd bracket that provides the working directory that you are using now. So where Stata is going to go and look for your data. If you type wd uh, uh, sorry it's not that it's uh, get wd get working directory one more. Huh? One more. One, in one word get wd command is going to provide the current working directory okay okay so we have we had before this working directory and now we have uh, set up our direct working directory tutorial for uh, data. Okay, we are going to change again the working directory, and we are going to use we are going to set up the tutorial for our as our working directory, not the data directory. Okay, so go go up, change the working directory, and instead of uh, using the the tutorial for data. This is now your working directory. Yeah? Your working directory is tutorial, tutorial for data. Huh? 
is the case for everybody. Yes. Yes. So now we are going to set up our working directory only in tutorials. Hmm? Four. Fine? Everybody should have, if you type get working directory, everybody should have the tutorial for as the working directory. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the good thing. No. Hmm? Is, is okay, Stefan? Yeah, because it points directly to uh, yes. data. <coughs> but now you can set up tutorial for as your working directory, you know, because I'm going to show you another way to set up working directories. Okay? So, indeed, you can store in your workspace the working directory as an object. You know, in a way that you can call the working directory. So we are going to create an object that is called WD that contains our uh, working directory. So WD is going to be our working directory. So this is the, the syntax that I need to use to set up to create an object that contains the working directory. So I'm going to create an object called WD that will contain my working directory. Okay? You type. And now in the list of objects, you have this new object that is WD. Hmm? Mm -hmm. If you type WD, R is going to show the working directory. It's fine for everybody? So there is another command that is very useful to set up working directories inside other working directories. This command is a um, file path command. The file pass command allows you to select folders within a specific folder. Okay? So now we have our working directory, and you know that in tutorial 4, you have the, 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 the folder data inside. So we can use this command to say, I have in my working directory one folder that is called data. Okay? What does this command allow us again? To select, uh, select a folder copy. within a already <laughs> created uh, working directory. But it's the same that when we select from the file, right? Sorry? It's just another way to select the data water. Yeah, it's another way. It's, it has to, this allows you to, once that you have a, a, a folder that is in this case tutorial form, specified, and you have folders inside, data, code, this command is going to create, like, from this directory, another directory, that is the directory data. Let's see how it's created. So we are going to create a new object that is called data path, okay? And using the command file path, we are going to say, in our working directory, we have another directory, another folder that is called data, okay? So, if you type data path, so you see that now you have another another folder 
each one in his, in his computer, that this object contains an, another folder, that is the, the folder data. Okay? Is clear for everybody? Is that, yeah, is, these are the objects that contain information about two directories of your computer. You know? The good thing of having objects with information about the directories is that you can use an additional command that is set working directory. So using this command, you don't need to go through the menu to select your working directory. You can, you can set your working directory straight. You know? So in this case, you can specify, I'm going to set my working directory in my data path. Because we are already in the current directory, we created a new one which was actually mm -hmm. for data data. And this folder doesn't exist. Oh, okay. So set working directory eventually um, the best way data path. Just mm -hmm. go back to in this case, AI. our working directory ha yeah. sorry, mm -hmm. our working directory to okay. has changed now to our data path. Now, if you just I cannot show it here because so you can just actually mute here even with the with the will go back to what you wrote before. So I don't put this. And then after you wrote like bypass. Okay. So you show a little bit the process. We had our previous working directory that in in my case is practice, but in your case is tutorial four. Hmm? And the current working directory is practice data hmm? or tutorial for data. <coughs> Did you get this process or, or it was a bit... Uh, I think that what is interesting is that in your working space, ls, using the ls command you will see that there is different, sorry, there is different type of objects one object is WD, that was your previous working directory, and you have created another working directory that is your data directory, your data folder. Okay? So you can using the set working directory command, you can set very easily the working directory or the directory that you're going to use to read or to store data using these objects. Now I came back to the to the practice to the tutorial for uh, working directory, or you can set again now the working directory to the data folder. Hmm? If I do get working directory, I enter again in the data folder. So you see that it's very easy to change from one folder uh, to another. Hmm? Is clear for everybody? Sure. You can do it from the menu or using this. Is that I, I just did this is more part of the practice to show you that you can create objects that contain working directories and uh, you can use them to change easily the working directory. But this is not, I mean, this is not needed. Eh? You can go to the menu and select your data directory and we'll set up your working directory at the one that you selected. Is this fine? So let's put as our working directory, the uh, data folder. Okay. So now I, I'm, I have it already. Yeah? You can type get working directory in your computer to be sure that everybody is in the data folder. In R is just uh, the up arrow in your, in your keyboard that allows you the up arrow in the keyboard that allows you to, to get the last command that you use. Eh? So you can move and get all the previous command that you have used using the app arrow. Hmm? Yeah, you can copy and paste as well. But this is quite useful because if you have used previous commands, you, know, you can go back to the command that you have been using just with the app and down arrows. Hmm? Is it okay? Okay. So let's try to now that you are that, that we are in the in the in the design working directory, uh, we are going to read our data. 
okay? But instead of keep just typing all the stuff here in the in the uh, Windows command, we are going to create a small do file. That is what usually we do when we are work we are working with this stuff. Okay? So to open a new uh, do file or a new script, we are going to go to uh, folder of this file and uh, a new script. So you can write here your your do file that you usually do in other softwares. Okay. So uh, let's write the, the the previous command that we used here in our script. So the last one that we have used was get the working directory to verify that we were in the correct uh, uh, folder. Okay. I'm going to increase again the size. So, in Stata, we use the control D to send the commands to the, to the, to the commands window. Hmm? In R, we can do copy and paste, as in Stata, okay? If you do copy and paste, you can, you can use your, your script for that. Or you can do control R hmm? to send the commands to the window command. Hmm? So in, in Stata, we use control, control D, and in R, we use control R. So you put the cursor in the line that you want to send, and you do control R, and the command is sent to the to the window, uh, to the command window. Is it okay? This is for to run the command. To run the command. Mm -hmm. the like in, do, in the do files. Mm -hmm. So we are going to So here in the page four of the first uh, practice, you have a list, you have a table where you should put the name of the variables here as the type of variable that you have in your database, okay? Just to, just to make sure that everybody read the correct file. Hmm? Okay, so everybody read the, 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 the database. You see that we have a first ID that is a numeric variable. We have a second variable that is a date. A third variable that is the onset of symptoms, that is a date. We have the postal code. We have the age, that is a number. And we have the east and north coordinates, our cases. Hmm? So it's the same as any other database. Okay? I, I have a question in the back there asking whether we can, we can type uh, comments in our file, you know? Or write comments uh, that are useful, for instance. Here we want to write that. This command is used to read the uh, CSV files. Hmm? In order to make this not uh, um, a, a command line, you, you need to use this symbol in R. How is called this symbol in Ash? You need to use an ash <laughs> to ash. <laughs> so if you if you do control R over this line, you see that it's sent to the 
to the command window, but it doesn't have any effect, you know? So you can document very easily your, your do files or your scripts huh? in R. Is it fine? So I, I put in the, in, the, in the exercise as well a very useful command in R that is the head command. Hmm? Head, and you put in brackets the objects that you want to read. And the head command provides the 10 first uh, registers of your database. Hmm? You see? If you type head that, it's going to show, uh, sorry, the six first uh, registers of your database. It's useful because it can, very easily you can see the structure of, of your database, you can verify that you are reading the correct file. So this is a command that you are going to use quite often in, in AMR. Hmm? So now the, we have a, a, an issue in R. If, if we go back to the first uh, discussion that we had this morning, is that in Stata and in many other software, you have just one database. You are working just in one database. You know. So to call a variable is very easy because you you just need to type the name of the variable. In R, you have plenty of objects, you know? So, if you type the name of a variable, it's not going to, to have any, it's meaningless, you know? So, in order to make the software understand uh, which variable do you want, you need to specify first which, in which object is this variable, okay? For instance, if in our database of cases of Christos Corridium we are interested in getting the age of each patient, we need to tell R that we are going to work in this specific object. Okay? So I'm going to say R that in the object that that contains the database of Christos Corridium cases, I'm going to use the age variable. Hmm? To, do, to, to call this variable, R use one symbol. Hmm? is the dollar symbol. This is for to select a variable, a var a, a, a variable, variable in, in Why are we supposed to specify which is your um, the, uh, file that you set? Because, because you otherwise you have, you have many. How, is, how, how the software well, is going to know? If you have many objects, you need to specify first. Which data, which data if, no, if, if you have one object, you have to specify it as well because the, the <coughs> software is not going to. Uh, it is just to make easier, like to standardize the way that you call uh, your objects and your variables. Okay. There is a command uh, that uh, well, you can fix a specific variable, but we will we will see later. So. The general way to specify or to call a variable in R is using the dollar uh, symbol. So this syntax is telling R that you want to read in the object that the variable age. So if you type here, that dollar h and you run the syntax in your common window you are going to have the list of edges <laughs> so if we want to see if we want to uh, if we want to see the the east Variable is just a matter of taking that is and is uh, case sensitive. Eh? So you need to specify correctly the name of the, of the variable. Yeah. Yeah, it's just you. 
you click on your do file editor or your script editor and you say a file save as and it will save it as a document dot art okay so oh, it's your uh, practice practice uh, one You, you should select where do you want to put this file. No? Save. Do you save? And this is save. Huh? That's too far now. Not the whole, uh, no, it's just the two file. This is just for the two file. Mm. The text, the script. Is that okay? So there is some. As any in any software, we have uh, commands to analyze our data. For instance, to, we can summarize our east uh, east uh, coordinates, doing summary and the variable, and it will provide the mean, the median, the quartile, the minimum, and the maximum value no? with this summary. Like uh, in any software, I mean, in a data you do the same. You specify the summary and the variable that you want. And here is that you need to put it in brackets and select the variable that you want. Okay, not shorten this. Mm. Sound is, is, the, is the addition of values. Okay? It's, it's quite straightforward. I mean. Is it okay? Okay, so let's now uh, try to create um, more complex objects in R. You know? Well, we, we are going to skip this part. <laughs> because we will go, no, we are getting late, uh, and uh, we will, I will explain the complex objects afterwards. Okay? So the thing is that you have in the practice. Uh, in, the, in the page 5, the way to create a complex object. Okay? Mm. Basically, as I told you before, a complex object contains boxes or slots where you are going to put information inside. Mm? I'm going to do it quickly. Okay? <laughs> This is my script. Eh? I have, I mean, I had everything written for the yesterday. <laughs> so here, here you have the, the syntax to uh, create a complex object. Okay. To create a complex object is a bit is a bit more complex. Object. <laughs> <laughs> First, you need to specify the structure of the object and after you can put the information inside. So basically, this command set class specify the uh, type of object that you are going to create. So I said I'm going to play, create a type of object that I have called complex object. Okay? And this type of complex object contains inside three things. A number, a vector, and a database. Hmm? All right? So it's like if I said, I'm going to create a type of objects that are called complex objects that contain inside three different slots or boxes. Hmm? In one box, I'm going to put a number. That can be uh, a random number. For instance, here I'm going to put a vector that it can be uh, the ID of my cases, and here I'm going to put a database that is the database of my Christosporidium cases. Okay? So this command of set class it creates like the structure for this object. Okay? So now I have this type of uh, a structure that is a complex object. 
Could you show the whole syntax? Should we do it by now? Sorry, uh, yeah. Do we Sorry, you said class first. Huh? And what is the, the bracket? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, it's in, two, it's in two steps. Eh? The first thing is, I'm going to create this. Let me show you. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> This is not the order, how you put the thing, so it's important. Yeah, it's important. Here, you said, I'm going to create this class of objects, that is a complex object, this, this is a class. That's hmm? And this class of objects contain three different things. A numeric value, a number, a vector, a, a data frame, okay? Why, why you have to, to write number like numeric and vector numeric? Because here, is, I, here I call the slot number, this is the name of the slot, and this is the type of object that okay, I will put the name and then is This is the type of object. The, what, what is the code, how is the code? Yeah. What is inside? The, ca the, the, okay. the characteristics the first, of the object. The first is you, the name you want to, 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 to use for the yeah. plot. Okay. For it the box. Be, uh, Francesco or yeah, it could be Matthias. Matthias. It will be a numeric. Yes. Huh? And it will be five. Uh, Francisco, it will be a numeric and it will be. Uh, but two. both lines belong together. So it's class, but then you have a comma and your presentation is not. Yeah, this, this goes all together. Is that because otherwise it doesn't fit in the same yeah. But this, the, the, you know the bracket? This bracket represents where the, the, the command starts, and this bracket represents where the command ends. Huh? So you see that you can create this class of object that is called complex object, and this complex object will have three slots inside. The slot called number, the slot, the, the slot called vector, and the slot called data. Hmm? After, once you have specified this class of objects, you can create a new object that is a new complex object, and you will select the information that you want to put in each a slot. Hmm? For the first slot, I'm going to put an already created object. You know, this is the first object that we created. What's the number five? Hmm? This is our, ver our first vector that we create. That was a collection of numbers from one to five. And this is the database of crystal polygon cases. Hmm? So yeah, you create the box, and after you fill the box with with, with different objects that you already created. And you can't start directly with <coughs> No, because you need to, to, to set, set first this class of objects. Otherwise, you the static is not going to understand is not going to understand the structure of this complex object. So here you set up the structure of the complex object and once you have set up the structure, you can fill or you can create a new a new object with this structure. You, you, can, you can select all in your script and send it with R. No, no, it, it doesn't need to be ended. It can be everything in the same line. It can be like, like this. You see? It, it will work anyway. The thing is that you need to be sure that this, is, this starts with a bracket and ends with a bracket. Okay. So, so I'm going to select all these, you see, and I can send this to the command window. And like this, if I type ls, you will see that a new complex object, a new object that is comp op, that is the name that I have provided, has been created. You know, this first one. Can I take it? So if you type here the comp object, it will show the whole thing. Now you cannot see anything because the database is too large. But there is a, a way to call in a separate way each slot. To call 
one slot, we are going to use an add. Before, to call a variable, we use the dollar symbol. To call an slot, we are going to use the add. So I just create this new object that is com of and if I want to, 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 to read just one slot, I'm going to do add and the slot uh, name. For instance, the number one. Okay? So let, let's type this uh, here. Comp add. The name, the name of, of the slot. Huh? So, everybody on board? Yeah. It's fine? So, did you see how we can call the slot? You know? For instance, we can call the other slot that we have, that is the vector, and it will provide the collection, the five numbers that we store in, in, in our vector slot, or we can edit our data as well from here, eh? because we save it in the in the slot data. So you can do edit, complex object data, and it will edit our database. So we, we have put in in the yes. slot data, our Christos Corridium database, and we edit complex object as data, it will edit our database. Okay? Is it fine? <coughs> so far, so good? Okay. So let's now try to uh, read a map. You know, because here we are not to learn R, but to work with maps and, and uh, uh, spatial information. So, uh, we are going to read a shape file into R. Hmm? So it's possible to read shape files in R, which is not the case in other softwares, the statistical softwares. So, sometimes when you want to do this uh, more sophisticated uh, uh, things in R, you need to load some libraries. This is because we request you to download in advance some libraries for this exercise. So the first library that we are going to use is the map tools. So to load a library, you need to type library and the name of the library. In this case, map tools. In this case, R load the library called map tools. Sometimes R needs other libraries in your uh, computer to uh, be able to run all the commands that they are in a specific library. This is because here it's saying the library map tools require as well other libraries to work properly. Is the library for range, the library SP, and the library lattice. But this is automatically loaded, you know? When there is a library that requires other libraries, they are automatically loaded. This is because yesterday I checked in each computer that you have not only the libraries that I request to you to download, but this package. But I have faults now. I have faults. Yeah? Faults. Not true. Yeah. Faults. Yes, RGOS is false, and there is some glibc permit command coming up. No, it's not true, it's false. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's for a license issue, but it's not going to be very important. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. No, it's not, uh, it's not important. We are not going to use this one for the, for, the, for the practice. But if you use a command that requires this library, you are going to have a problem. Hmm? But for this practice, it's not a big issue. Hmm? You need to download this part. But, uh, so basically, here what we have done is to load this library that allows to read shape files and many other things. But one of the things that allow is to read shape files. Okay. So the next object 
that we are going to create is a new object that is called Christosporidium map. I call it like this. You can call it as you want. Cry map. It's not that we are going to cry at the end of the <laughs> practice, I hope. But <laughs> it's the Christosporidium map. And the command that we are going to use is the read shape poly command. So there is a command that is read shape poly that allows to read uh, shape files. Okay? So in your data for the tutorial four, I you, you remember that yesterday we create this shape huh? that contained the incidence of Christos Polydium cases in different local authorities. Do you remember? Yes. Mm -hmm. That there were three main uh, local authorities with high rates of Christos Polydium. You know? So what we are going to do now is to read this incidence uh, shape file. Okay? To do so, since I put this file in your data folder, you, can, you just need to specify the shape that you want to read. Yeah? It's quite uh, straightforward. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you run this syntax, R is going to read the shape file. Hmm? Um, and with shape file, it means all these four files with the yeah, stuff. The shape, yeah. the complete shape. So with this command, with this simple command in R, we are going to read the complete shape file. The polygons, the attributable table, everything. So now, all the things that we had yesterday in, in our window are contained in this object. Hmm? That is a complex object with different slots. In one slot, yeah. we have the polygons. In another slot, we have the data. In another slot, we have the index. You know? So this is because it's important to understand the slot part. You know? So now it's very, it's very easy. In one slot, we put the polygons there. In another slot, we put the attributable table, and so on and so forth. Hmm? So if, if, if you want to see the attributable table, that we create yesterday, our incidents, uh, where we calculate the incidents, you just need to select the slot that contains the attributable table. This slot is the data slot. It's quite logical, no? So if we type, let's do the edit. Instead of this, we can do the edit. Edit <coughs> our Christos Peridium map and the slot data, you will see the table that you created yesterday. The data is a general name or it's because you... the name of your file? It's a general name. General name for, for, for this type of... So basically now, what R did, what R did is to create a specific <coughs> complex object that is a shape file object, and in the slot data, by default, R store your attributable table. Because so all R data, I mean, data. Yeah, but by default, R create this box that always called data, and there it store your attributable table when you read a shape file. So it's a, it's a convention that is very useful because whatever the, the, the shape file that you are going to read, if you type this at data, you are going to read the attributable table or your shape, or the, of your shape file. You know? So it's a very easy way to... Yesterday we click on the on the command, with, there, there was a small table that you click to open the attributable table. Here, to access to your attributable table, you just need to, to, to type this uh, command line. Uh, we cannot edit it. If we write edit, type map only, 
No, because the crime map contains different boxes. In one of these boxes is the data, but in the other ones you have the polygons and the index. So you cannot edit a, a complex object. You need to specify the slot that you want to edit. So here, if you do edit your uh, attributable table, you see that one of the variables that is in your attribute table is the incidence that you calculated yesterday. This is the same incidence that you calculate yesterday for the uh, crystal polygon cases in the different local authorities. It's a bit like a family with children. One child is the shape, the shape itself, the other child is the table with the data, and then you have to address the individual child. You yeah. don't address the family. Exactly. Yeah. I, I tend to explain this like using the concept. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a nice way to explain it. But we explain it before as using boxes, you know? It's one child is automatically called data. Exactly. What are the other names of the children? Okay. You, you, can, you can see the slots names. There is a command that is called slot names, <laughs> where you will see the names of your children, <laughs> of the object crime map, and you see these are the, the slots of the children, as Florian uh, Pulsa just The first children, the child, the first child is called data, the other one is the polygon that contains the polygon, this is the plot order, this is one that I don't know. And this is the projection. Hmm? You remember that we were using yesterday as well projections. So there, by default, it is stored the projection if uh, the projection is stored properly in your save file. So, as a convention, the stata stored in the data slot your attributable table of your save file. Okay. So now we are going just to plot the map to see how it looks like. To plot the map, we just need to use the command plot. Plot, and we need to specify the our shape file that is the Christmas polygon map. I add another uh, option that is that to that the access will appear. Ax equal true. Okay. In this case, the access will be plotted. So if you launch this uh, command, you have the same ax equal true equal t is equal true. It plots the access. You know. Like the coordinates. Oh, it's equal, okay. So, voila, you have your first map in R. We <laughs> succeed. <laughs> okay? So let, let's take a break. <laughs> five, five, five minutes. Five minutes, because we are running really late. Huh? So just as just before before we we take a coffee, if you want to save everything that we did so far, you can use this command: save image and specify the name of the file that you want to create and everything that you have created so far: the the vectors, number, the database of the existing polygon places. The shape file from the crystal polygon will be stored in this file. It's like the project that here you have all the information. It's not as in one room that is just only with the information here you store all the information. As well, not the two file. The two file has to be stored in a separate in a separate file. Yes, yeah, to store. Yeah, just in the top. You have to. But isn't it enough to just store the two files? Yeah. Yes. Like exactly. You don't need. To. I usually I never, never okay. save, yeah. save the yeah. data so because if I have the do file and I know where I have the data, I just run yeah. the do file and I can reproduce again the same analysis. Yeah. So you suggested that I was running the, the analysis automatically in each computer. Basically, I had the do files. I I, I run them. And that's it. The do file, to save the do file, you need to click first, to select first the, the do file window, go to file and save as. 
and you can save it with, with the name that you want. For instance, practice one dot r and save it. It's in file, file, save as. But you need to click first in the in the, in the do file editor or in the script editor. Okay.